that I and my wife had never committed a crime. I knew why we were there. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was injustice. And injustice is something that I've spent my entire life fighting against. And so I was prepared to fight. This is Peter Humphrey, a one-time journalist turned corporate investigator who in 2013 was sitting in a Chinese cell awaiting his fate. His two years in the slammer were based on accusations of obtaining private information by illegal means. Responding to this statement is Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijin, who said, I want to reiterate that China is a country ruled by law. These statements were from 2013, but both before and after this, Chinese prisons were the talk of the town in terms of human rights abuse, brainwashing, and are, according to Human Rights Watch, an alleyway in hell. In this video, we're going to learn about the creepy lifestyle of Chinese prisons. In 2014, Stuart B. Foster published his perspective of a Chinese prison which he experienced under the brutal, authoritarian, forced labor camp system of the People's Republic of China. In his eight months at the White Cloud District Detention Center in Guangzhou, he revealed that his cell was a small, moldy room, almost the size of a racquetball court. Obviously, we weren't expecting it to be some villa or anything, but what was unexpected was that there were 30 other prisoners in the same cell sleeping on the concrete floors. That means no blankets, no pillows, and a whole lot of prisoners who had to sleep on their sides to make room for others. Each day at 6.30 a.m., they line up to brush their teeth together and use a single hole in the ground as the only toilet. Some rituals that later followed were of reciting detention regulations, chanting communist slogans, and doing military-style marching in place. Stewart describes that at the time it was the Christmas season, so the prisoners would line the wall to assemble Christmas lights all day with only two 10-minute breaks for lunch, one at 11 a.m. and one at 4 p.m. Plus, they all had a 6,000 light quota, which, if not met, would be met with punishment. Speaking of punishments, the most common one is withholding the daily ration of two hand-rolling cigarettes. If that didn't work, then food rations would be cut in half. Oh, and the food options were rice, turnips, and a little pork fat, which according to Stewart was horrible, but was enough to sustain life. Some of the harsher punishments were getting shackled and chained to the floor for a minimum of three days and a maximum of two weeks. Stewart was released from prison in December 2013 with a traumatizing learning experience of the Chinese penal system. In this experience, Stewart was protected under U.S. laws inside the Chinese prison, but that's not the case for everyone. Obviously, the guards get tired from this, considering that around 1.7 million people got incarcerated in China as of June 2020. This makes China second only to the U.S. in terms of the number of prisoners. Now you'd think that a prison sentence and a death sentence are two different things, right? Well, unfortunately, China merged the two. China is regarded as the world's leading executioner, according to Amnesty International. They've estimated that they've killed thousands of prisoners from 2016 to 2020. The actual numbers are unknown, since China's death row is shrouded in secrecy. Now, as worse as death row may be, there's a shocking use China gets out of putting prisoners on death row organ harvesting. According to Al Jazeera, hundreds of Chinese surgeons and medical personnel have been accused of killing death row prisoners by removing their hearts for transplant even before the inmate had been officially dead. Now, you may wonder that organ harvesting from about to be dead people could be an advantage, but according to new research from the Australian National University, Chinese surgeons are the cause of the death of the donor. A review in a Chinese scientific journal revealed 71 cases where surgeons might have removed a patient's heart or lungs before a legitimate determination of brain death. These 71 cases occurred between 1980 and 2015. The problem here is that, as the co-author of the study Matthew Robertson pointed out, the physicians became the executioners on behalf of the state, and that the method of execution was heart removal. In 2012, China announced the implementation of the new national system that will mark the start of phasing out the old practice. So did it stop there? In recent years, China's existing government has conducted massive crackdowns against practitioners of Falun Gong, a spiritual discipline that was banned in China in the 1990s. 
and Uyghur Muslims, an ethnic minority. According to the tribunal, it was found that more than 1.5 million detainees in Chinese prison camps were being killed for their organs to serve a booming transplant trade that's worth $1 billion a year. Instead of prisons, this practice has moved to prison camps, where Falun Gong practitioners and Uyghur Muslims are the main detainees. Several survivors of prison camps told the tribunal of how they were subjected to physical examinations, including blood tests, x-rays, ultrasounds, etc. The statement read that, the only reasonable explanation for these examinations was to ensure that victims' organs were healthy and fit for transportation. You can also see that forced organ harvesting is not just for prisoners, but specific ethnic, linguistic, and religious minorities. They're even detailed without being explained the reasons for arrest or given arrest warrants. According to the UN human rights experts, the most common organs removed from the prisoners are reportedly hearts, kidneys, livers, corneas, and less commonly, parts of livers. Based on this, China becomes the only country in the world to have an industrial-scale organ trafficking practice that harvests organs from executed prisoners of conscience. Also, China has the second largest transplant program in the world, which is why. The last promise of not using organs was made by Huang Jifu on 3rd of December 2014. But he did tell Chinese media that prisoners may, in fact, still be used. I'm not saying I oppose death row prisoner donations, he said to a state-linked broadcaster on the 11th of January 2015. If the death row prisoners are truly moved by their conscience, then it's not impossible. According to Human Rights Watch, a labor rights activist, Liu Nanxun, was serving a three-year labor re-education term in the Shuanghe labor reform camp. During that time, he staged a hunger strike against the authorities. Because of that, he was subsequently subjected to beatings with electric shock batons, denied water for an extended period, and placed in solitary confinement. Later, he was reported to be suffering from a blocked intestine, swollen lymph nodes, and extensive mouth ulcers, and still didn't receive any medical treatment. Many activists spoke up about the injustice of China's penal system, like Wang Goki, who confessed that during his 11-year sentence, he was denied all family visits just because he failed to memorize the prison rules. And Zhou Guochen, who served a 30-year sentence and received no medical treatment for his prison-contracted tuberculosis. Another example we have is of Yeshe Samten, a monk, who passed away six days after his release from Chaisem prison as a result of the torture he endured during his two-year sentence. Another brutal case was in March 2014, when Meng Shanguen was tortured with an electric baton. According to the report, he was shocked till the baton ran out of charge. After that, they ordered the inmates to touch Meng's skin with an exposed wire. At one point, the guard touched Mr. Meng's penis with the exposed wire and said, I'm going to make you unable to have any kids. The torture lasted until the guards got tired, not when Meng had had enough. As you can tell, getting incarcerated in China is nothing less than a death sentence. Despite the lack of basic needs in prisons, they want their inmates to live up to estranged quotas. Most recently, there has been a trend of prison camps popping up against the banned minorities that continue to be fulfilling the supply for the organ harvesting industry. Do Chinese prisoners even have a choice? According to Huang's statement to People's Daily on January 28, 2015, if death row prisoners are willing to atone for their crime by donating organs, they should be encouraged. Over there, nothing is encouraged. It's all forced. How do you think Chinese prisoners can fight against wrongful arrests and forced organ harvesting? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.